Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use an aggregate device for Mac in Reaper. Now the purpose of an aggregate device is it allows us to use multiple audio interfaces at the same time in Reaper, which is important for things like a USB mic, which is only an input, or Bluetooth speakers, which only has an output, or just to get more inputs or outputs using multiple interfaces at the same time, if you have a few. But we could also use the Mac input or outputs as extra inputs or outputs in Reaper. So let's take a look at our audio device settings. I have it set up to my audio interface right here. But as you could tell, I have a few others. For example, right here are my Bluetooth speakers that I've set up in my lounge. So anyone sitting in the lounge can hear what's going on in the control room. But as I mentioned earlier, this device has no inputs. So if I choose it, I could hear my song. But if I go to the input on the track, there's no inputs to choose from because the Bluetooth speakers have no inputs. Or if I choose the built-in microphone on my Mac, that's not going to have any outputs. So I can choose my input of my built-in microphone on my Mac right here. Testing one, two. But there's no way of hearing it because there's no output set up as an interface. Or we could do the opposite. I could choose the built-in output on the Mac. And then we could hear the audio to my Mac. But once again, there's no input to choose. So it's very limited, only using one option. And as we can see here, I have a bunch of different ones to choose from. I have a task game interface as well that I might want to use for more inputs or outputs. Now there's another option over here that allow us different input and output devices, but it's not recommended. Instead, we should use an aggregate device. So let's go to the Finder on the Mac and go up over here to the Go menu and choose Utilities. And that'll open up this folder where we can choose the application or the utility audio MIDI setup. Let's open it. And it's going to show all my audio devices right over here. And if it doesn't show up, just go to the window and choose show audio devices. And they all should show up right over here. So let's go down here to the plus sign and create an aggregate device. We'll give it a name, my aggregate device, and it's set up with no inputs or outputs. Now it's important that we choose our best interface first, because it's gonna go in order when we use it in Reaper. So I'll choose my preferred one right here. And now we could see all my inputs and outputs over here. We could actually name them, but we could also do that in Reaper. So I'm not gonna worry about that. But if you notice over here, it changes to four inputs and four outputs. That's what that interface has. But now we can add more after it. Like my Bluetooth speakers over here, let's choose that. And let's add in the option right here, drift correction which is going to keep these units in time while clocking off the first one. And now we could see I have four inputs and six outputs. Let's also add the built-in microphone, built-in output, and my Tascam audio interface to give us more inputs and outputs. And now we could see 10 inputs and 12 outputs. So now we can close this and go back to Reaper Go to the audio device settings and change it to my aggregate device, the one we just created. So now, 
If we go to the input on our track, we'll see all those inputs to choose from. Analog 1 through 4 for my first interface, inputs for the built-in microphone, and my Tascam audio interface. So I could choose my main microphone right here, and we should hear it when I put it into record. Testing, testing, testing one, two, three. one, two, three. So my mic plugged in to that interface is now working, or we could switch it to my built-in microphone on my computer. Testing one, testing two. One, two. So we could choose all the inputs that are available. And we could do the same thing for our outputs. Let's go to the view menu and choose routing matrix. By default, the master output or master parent send is going to analog one and two, my main interface, which is why we hear it when we hit play. Or we could switch it to a different output. Like right over here is my Bluetooth speakers. And now it comes out of there. Or even choose the built-in output of my Mac. Or my task game output right over here. Or we could use all of them. So I could hear it in my control room, in my lounge, and if I set up my Mac as a separate headphone output. So it's very flexible how you want to set this up. And we could also set up different mixes for each output. For example, let's make two new tracks. I'll call this one headphone mix, and this one lounge mix for my Bluetooth speakers. Then we can send all these tracks, hold down shift to the headphone mix and to the lounge mix. Let's take this one out of the master parent send and the same with this one. So now our mix over here is for our control room. But our mix over here is for our headphones. If we set this up to go out, my built-in output on my Mac. So I can create a whole separate mix over here just for that output. And I can do the same thing for my lounge mix. Master Parent Send is off. Send the output to my Bluetooth speakers and create a separate mix right over here just for the people in the lounge. So it's a great way of setting up separate mixes for each one of our output, but also giving us more inputs to choose from, as we can see right over here. My first interface, the built-in microphone, and my second interface. So that's pretty much it. That's how to use an aggregate device for Mac in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.